Hi guys, and welcome to another Creatively Me with Brie. You guessed it, I'm Brie. So a little bit about myself. I am both a digital artist as well as a traditional artist. And in this piece today, we will be doing watercolor. I chose complementary colors, blue and orange for this piece. So you'll see that I'm adding paint to this small piece of paper, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, but I'm working wet on dry paper. So wet paint, dry paper, or wet brush, dry paper. Um, I will say this tends to be my preferred method, though obviously different projects call for different techniques. Once I have my base color down, you can see that I'm, you know, creating, um, strokes down the paper just because I want it to have some continuity and consistency. And you can also see here that I am making sure that the paint reaches up against that paint. I'm using a low heat heat gun here and just keeping it several inches away <laughs> from the paper so we don't burn the paper and just going back and forth and being really patient. You don't have to do this. You can let your paint dry naturally. I'm not that patient though. So I tend to use my cute little heat gun that I keep beside me. Next, I go in with a fine detailing brush and I use an orange color. It's a medium orange. It is a combination of colors uh, from my paint palette. If you want to know which paint palette I used, just let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do a video on that as well. I do have a, a vast variety of watercolor um paint options that I use. Uh, once I have the orange um, base down, I do end up adding uh, almost like a reddish orange um, just to create some shadow and to really make the color pop against the blue. I didn't want the colors to be competing too much, so I really just kept the orange isolated to the berries and didn't really incorporate it into the background or into the leaves that we'll be painting in a moment. And the reason why I'm using such a small piece of paper, I believe the exact measurements are two by three inches tall. And um, the personal reason for that is I used to suffer and still do uh, not as much, thank goodness, from perfectionism. And it really prevented me from creating and allowing myself to enjoy the creative process. Um, and in that struggle with perfectionism, I would also struggle with this almost like canvas paralysis where I would stare at a piece of paper or canvas or whatever medium that I was going to work on and worry that I was going to mess it up before I even started. I would worry about what if I, you know, waste paint? What if I can't pull this off? Lots of self-doubt and imposter syndrome coming through. And so one day I said, you know what? I can spare a small piece of paper. And if it's garbage, then I can literally throw it in the garbage and not worry about it. And so that's actually how I started to build my confidence in terms of painting again, um, and trying a new medium. Watercolor is newer to me. It's something I picked up over the last year. I have worked with watercolor before, but it's been many, many, many moons. Um, I've always been primarily uh, an acrylic painter. So, and then I moved on to digital painting. So now I do digital watercolor and gouache. I do have acrylic still. I just haven't you know, whipped it out in a while. So that might be something that I give a try again. But right now I'm just focusing on watercolor because I love that it really pushes me to be loose and um, kind of allowed the paint to do its work rather than me work the paint. Um, and, and it's a great practice for me to let go of the perfectionism. All right. And I'm using the small detailing brush here to create the stems and just putting in some extra color where I feel like the piece would benefit from just some color variation so it doesn't all get lost in the background. I'm also going to take this moment since right now all you're seeing is me brush in um, little stems to say thank you if you're still here. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. I know it's annoying we ask, but um, it tends to help people remember to subscribe if they haven't already. <laughs> I will be going in with a brush that's different than this detailing brush to make the leaves. There it is. Um, and 
I believe it's called a round tip brush and it's the size 10 that I'm using. It's sort of middle of the line in terms of sizes that I have with this set, um, which I did get off of Amazon. Now, I'll be honest and say, in case you couldn't already tell yourself, that I don't have uh, perhaps the most uh, graceful uh, brush strokes. I, I, they're not as confident as I would like them to be, and that is something that I'm working on. Um, but I do put down the first brush stroke and make sure that it's placed where I would like before I start getting the shape established. Gotta love awkward silence. I do take a moment here to uh, just sort of tap in on some of the wet paint, some of the darker blue, just to get some color variation because it was starting to look a little bit too flat in my opinion. And one of the things that I absolutely love about watercolor is how there's so much color variation um, and saturation uh, within a single brush stroke or at least the potential. This is probably my favorite part of the project. Uh, it's a part where I really don't have to uh, think too much and I just kind of get to get in the flow of creativity where I just get down these really nice shapes and just sort of let the creativity run. So right now, what you're seeing is me add in uh, the more saturated, uh, I would call them the forefront leaves of the project. Um, so I'm making sure that they have a good amount of color on them because we will be adding more colors to the background in a couple of moments. As I, you know, edit and look over this video and the, the piece that I created, um, it lets me see how I could have done things differently. Um, not necessarily better, um, you know, maybe sure a few things here or there, but I will say different. So I might actually try this project again, and I want to see what happens if I allow myself to make the leaves a combination of orange and blue, um, and just see if I can loosen up my style a little bit and just sort of allow the colors to blend and just be fun and spontaneous with it. Um, if you want to join me on that, uh, let me know. I will definitely be trying it out sometime this week. Now, right now I'm working on the background leaves. If I had done this technically, uh, in the correct order, I would have done these first because they're in the background. And typically when using watercolor, you want to work from light to dark. So ideally, I would have made the background color, the very, very light blue in the back first, then second, put these light leaves um, as the background and then um, would have done the foreground, which was the more prominent berry leaves, um, like berries and leaves that I have that stand out right now. However, I did not plan well um, ahead. I tend to still work um, sort of backwards in a lot of my paintings. I've always done this where I um, am so excited to paint the forefront <laughs> of the painting that I forget about painting the the background until um, much further on in the piece. Um, so sometimes I end up having to like, say if I'm working in like acrylic or even digitally, I have to create new layers or repaint existing um, parts of the foreground because I have to add in some of the background. It pays to plan guys. It pays to be a planner and I can be but this is not the area of which that skill comes through. I'm working on it. We are approaching the end of this project. Um, there's just a few spots left where I am making sure to add just a little bit of leaves, making sure that the background um, is fully covered. Um, I don't want there to be uh, any spots that stand out. Um, and you know, pull attention away from the main 
focus, which is the orange berries. Um, here I'm using that mini heat gun again and keep away from the paper, not too close. Also, small tip, if you're having trouble getting tape off your paper, aside from making sure that the, the page itself is actually dry, using a heat gun can help loosen up the tape and make it easier to remove from your watercolor pieces. And here's the finished product. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. As always, your time is appreciated. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and if you want, give me a comment. Take care, guys.